Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and this time we've got the pleasure of D1S1990. Is that going to be pronounced as Dis? Is that Elite Speak or is it D1s? I'm going to be going with Dis throughout this replay, who's playing in the Tier 8 German Premium Tank Destroyer. This is the Rheinmetall Scorpion. Now Dis is from the Russian server and it's been a while since I featured a replay from the Russian server, but this one was just too good to pass up. And it's always a pleasure to feature replays from the Russian server because I'd say it's the most developed server with regards to regional exploits of World of Tanks. They've had the game for longer than the Europeans and the Americans and they've got vastly more players. Uh, I think there's got to be at least five if not ten times more players playing on the Russian server than the European server but that that's just a, a guesstimate. And I've played on the Russian server a little bit but not enough to really justify my opinion as the definitive one on what's the differences between the servers but my initial findings and having watched a, a load of replays from the Russian server suggests that it's kind of a little bit more aggressive. Russians don't seem to be so afraid to make bold plays and just go in and go one versus one and that high kind of risk reward style gameplay can result in some of the most fantastic games but also it can result in some of the most frustrating moments for when you're playing on the server yourself and there's just another player on the enemy team who wants to come straight towards you and take you out um, it, it is a little different and it takes some getting used to I would like to get back on the Russian server but uh, I was doing that about a year ago or maybe a year and a half ago now gosh time flies when Wargaming really had what I would call a content drought. I had all the vehicles unlocked, nothing more to grind for. But now Wargaming is seeming to just up the amount of standard vehicles as well as premium vehicles that are going into the game. We've got all of these new tier 10 light tanks to play for. I just finished getting the top two tier Swedish vehicles, the Strutzvang 103B and the Kranvang. So I feel like I'm always one step behind and of course we had to get, go towards the, the Panzer 7 as well recently. There, there was so much grinding of my tier 9 tanks that I, I kind of forgot about playing on the North American and the Russian server altogether. Now Dis is playing in this this Rheinmetall Scorpion as I mentioned. This vehicle it, it was probably the first of the new era of premium tanks or you could also argue that the Mutz was the first of the, the new era of premium tanks. Now what do I mean when I say new era? I'm suggesting where Wargaming truly decided to make premium vehicles just as good, if not arguably, and I don't think there is an argument in the case of some of them, just flat out better than their tier 8 counterparts. Now I'm not here to discuss about the, the intricate details of that, I'm just highlighting that the Scorpion kind of caught a lot of us off guard and myself included I, I was just thinking is this too good to be true and back then when the scorpion was released of course some people were saying oh well, this tank is just too good but we hadn't really had any premium tanks that were freely available apart from the, the lower tier tanks such as the E25 and some of the other filthy tanks like the Panzer 2J that were just that could be so influential in the battle and I think the scorpion it caught me by surprise. I was just too busy thinking about the opportunities to make a load of credits in this tank. Then the impact, the, the, the subsequent just as powerful if not more powerful premiums would have on the matchmaker. So I picked up the Scorpion. I loved it. I thought it was probably the best tier 8 premium in the game when it was released. And it, it's still very strong, although it now obviously has a lot of competition as the vehicle has, has been released for at least a, a year or so now. Uh, probably just about a year thinking about it. I'm not entirely sure when the Rheinmetall Scorpion came out. I know that the new era started with the Mutz and that was probably about a year and a half ago now. So what's great about the Scorpion? Well the Scorpion has gigantic alpha damage for a tier 8 premium. 490. I believe that's the highest on any premium tank thinking about it. Uh, I'm not sure if Wargaming are going to be putting any other kind of high tier premium tank destroyers in that have a bigger gun than this. This is the same gun that's on the Borsig, the Rheinmetall Borsig Waffenträger, and also on the Ferdinand and also the Jagdpanther 2 if that's your kind of thing. Now these 128 millimeters just seem to poke holes in your opponents but of course not against the T26E5. That was right up against the upper plate. I think he would have done better to shoot the side armor there of that Patriot variant. 
but with 246 millimeters of penetration on your standard rounds and 311 on your APCR rounds, you really have the clout to be able to deal with anything. And even if you're in the worst possible matchmaking, such as this, where you're having to deal with multiple tier 10 tanks and multiple tier 9 tanks on the enemy team and three cell propelled guns, the Scorpion just seems to be very efficient. But I think the key trait of this vehicle is the fact that it's also quite fast. And furthermore, that it has a fully traversable turret that just makes it so flexible and able to use that 490. This tank destroyer just seems to be able to put the shots in and be able to, with its flexibility, and then pull back into safety before the enemies have had a chance to blink. So with the shutdown on that Lerva, this game is starting to look rather ugly indeed. And there's a Jagdpanzer E100 coming up on his left. Oh, thank goodness the Jagdpanzer missed. Now remember that Jagdpanzer E100 has a terrible rate of fire. It might have all the alpha damage in the world. But the Scorpion, which fires just under five rounds a minute, possibly can reload a second time before the Jagdpanzer manages to get his second shell in. Wow, great result showing you the difference in ideology between these two tank destroyers investing all of your damage in a single shot to hopefully vanquish the enemy or having a little bit more flexibility and a bit of rate of fire to to be able to get another round out and talk about getting another round out this shuts down the object 704 on the enemy team already starting his Collar Banoffs medal attempt for standing alone against at least five opponents. So now with four kills and 4,600 damage, you'll, you'll think that he's, he's certainly changed the outcome of this game massively. He's given himself a chance. And now it looks like Dis is going to make his way towards the middle of the map, probably to try and shoot across here. But he does get spotted. Was it the Jagdpanzer E100? But he doesn't have time to worry as the Batch at 15555 crests the ridge, but unable to depress the gun enough to shoot the Scorpion. This thing is very light the armored indeed with 30 millimeters of frontal hull armor and any high explosive round hitting this vehicle right now even with the reduced penetration is likely to be fatal so no prizes for guessing where the Jagdpanzer E100 is right now and this is going to make his way towards the center of the map I really like this play you can get some really good vision along this part of the avenue through these archways here and hopefully he can use the fact that well actually looking at it he might not even be using, I think he's probably using coated optics, but his view range isn't quite up to that 445 meters maximum spotting. So I'm not sure if he doesn't have a very skilled crew or it's maybe a choice that he isn't using coated optics in this tank, something that I do love to use myself. But considering he's not using binoculars, he's not using a camera net, it is very likely that he's using coated optics on this tank. So he puts one against the side of the Jagdpanzer E100. I'm not sure if that was an armor piercing or an APCR round, but it ricochets off. And he's got 38 seconds now to be able to try and put a round into the tier 10 German tank destroyer. He fires another one blind, but that's no problem. He's still got lots of ammunition left. Seven rounds is enough to do roughly about 3,500 damage to this tier 10 German tank destroyer. Looks like he's been seen. Yep, you sometimes you don't need your sixth sense to go off to know when it's time to pull back. Obviously, if the enemy randomly turns his gun to face you, then it's quite likely he's going to see you. And a great interrupt there. That was one of the last chances he had, and oh, the artillery hits him in the tracks. Very lucky that that didn't hit the back of his tank flush, otherwise it might have taken him out in a single hit. But interrupting the cap circle with only 10 seconds left, at least Dis has secured himself a defender medal now with that interrupt, but I guess that's not going to be enough. Tries to fire to the side of the Jagdpanzer E100 there, rolling just high of average, 497 damage. Now he pushes forwards. Why is this Jagdpanzer not spotting him? Maybe the Jagdpanzer E100 has, a oh, he fires blind there. One thing we must highlight is that the Jagdpanzer E100, just before he, he went out of sight, had 1,200 hit points. So let's take a look to see how much health that Jagdpanzer E100 has when he reappears. But with another blind fire there, Dis now starts to be a, has to start to be a little bit careful. He's got two tier 10, well, two self-propelled guns on the enemy team to deal with and his tier 10 German tank destroyer. But he blind fires a high explosive round that interrupts the Jagdpanzer E100. And I think it's going to flush 
the Jagdpanzer E100 out of his camping location. He fires another one blind, it doesn't hit, and there's the Jaegeru, 725 hit points, meaning that this pretty much did about 500 damage there to the tier 10 German tank destroyer. Great result, he's got two armor piercing rounds and two APCR rounds left. Now he's got to make them count, he has to hit this Jagdpanzer E100 at least twice if he wants to finish him off, and that's if he wants to save his high explosive rounds to deal with the remaining two self-propelled guns. But now on five kills and 6,000 damage. This is just so impressive to see a tier eight tank destroyer dealing with so many higher tiered opponents, including those two Jagdpanzer E100s, which is, which is pretty much decimated from full health. Well, at least this one he has, but not quite the other one. The other one was a little bit more wounded when he was making his way in towards him. So Dis manages to spot the Jagdpanzer E100 without getting spotted himself. And he fires a round that bounces off the superstructure of the Jagdpanzer E100. Even these 300mm APCR rounds not able to contest that Jagdpanzer's strong armor. And oh no, disaster! He bounces another APCR round. Now he has only five rounds to deal with three remaining vehicles and he's gonna have to pen that Jaegeru at least once with an armor piercing round if he wants to take this one down. So he fires a high explosive round there, he does 166 damage, that's not quite what we were looking for however, the Jagdpans are still on 559 hit points to all intents and purposes unless he rolls high then that means that he's gonna have to fire another high explosive round if he manages to penetrate these AP rounds, but he's been bouncing so many APCR. Has he found the correct angle now to penetrate the Jagdpanzer's e E100's lower plate? Yes! Great stuff. 515. Nice roll there. Now he's loading the high explosive. But with three shells left and three tanks left to kill, albeit with the Jagdpanzer on low health, this could still be tricky. There's the Batchat 15558. 490 hit points. But slam dunks it right into the top of the turret. The high explosive rounds on this vehicle with 630 average damage. That would have to be the mother of all low rolls to not finish off that tier 10 self propelled gun in a single shot. And now, the Jagdpanzer must know where Dis is. Dis knows where the Jagdpanzer is. He pokes out around the corner, spots the Jagdpanzer, fires clutch, and whoa! Finally! That one flew true, doing 44 damage with the high explosive round pretty much splashing over the, the, the superstructure, or at least the upper plate of the Jagdpanzer there. That's something that not a lot of people know, is that the roof deck of the Jagdpanzer E100 is actually quite thin, only about 40 millimeters thick, I believe, and so that means that a lot of 121 millimeter caliber guns and larger can overmatch it, or alternatively high explosive rounds can do significant damage, even setting that behemoth on fire. So now with a single round left on his tank, Dis is approaching the enemy's cap circle. The 212A on the enemy team has not been spotted yet. Now the hit points on that 212A, I think it's about 440. And remember, he's got 490 alpha damage, or well, 460 to be exact. As long as this doesn't low roll, we're gonna be okay. Okay, things just got a little interesting. The 212A, inanimate though, is he AFK? He doesn't seem to have been shooting at Dis the entire game. Maybe that 212A thought that he could go and get, get himself some, uh, <laughs> some buta brot. Maybe he thought he could get himself a cheeky sandwich. Or maybe a casual drink in the, in the afternoon or the evening whenever this game was played. Because he... He did presume that surely a full health Jagdpanzer E100 and Object 704, <laughs> the self-propelled guns, could be able to take down Dis, so he probably thought that he wasn't needed. But now Dis is completely out of ammunition, and he's going to have to try and find a way to take out this AFK 212A. And it looks like Dis is greedy. Now remember, it takes 1 minute and 40 seconds to be able to fully cap out the enemy base in a standard, or I guess in an assault game mode, if you're by yourself. So that time window has just disappeared in 3, 2, 1. Okay, now his only ch option to win this game is to kill the 212A. So he gives it a little love butt. He does 17 damage to himself. Oh, he gives him another love button. He does 54 damage to himself. And even that tiny little bump down there, he lost a little bit more health. Seven health from the 212A on the way out. What a disaster. Dis, what are you doing? Dis, you've got one minute and 20 seconds. I think he's in full panic right now. Dis described this replay as blood, sweat, and tears. We're going to have to see if that comes true. We can see his frustration zooming in and out of his mouse wheel as quickly as he can, knowing that he might have just completely fluffed this game. This 212A seems to be very heavily armored. How is Dis going to approach this situation to try and remove this tier 9 self-propelled gun without any ammunition in his tank? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Flip it. Flip it. Oh, no, don't. 
No, it's it's coming back! Oh my goodness! 37 hit points remaining, but he did manage to do the remaining 31 damage to that 212A. That could have been the heartbreak of all time, I believe. But great result here, Dis, taking down a monster carry. And you were right, there was blood, sweat, and tears in this replay. So what a thrilling game of World of Tanks here for Dis. He manages to pick up, unsurprisingly, an ace tanker for 2,433 base experience points. He gets a Birders Medal for killing three enemy self-propelled guns that are higher tier than his tank. Now previously, at least until recently, to be able to get a Birders Medal, you had to kill five self-propelled guns. But of course, with a new matchmaker, that is just not possible. In addition to this, he gets a Radley Walters medal for his 8 kills, a Halonen's medal for killing 2 enemy tanks that are 2 tiers higher than his vehicle, the Defender medal, and this was probably about several hundred base defense points against that Jagdpanzer at the end of the game, and a high caliber for 8,214 damage dealt in a tier 8 tank. And of course, with that 212A bucking up and then splatting down on his tank, he also gets a Kamikaze medal as it was higher tier than him. And holy mother of credits, 313,000, I guess that's enough to resupply all that APCR ammunition, 231 thousand credits received here for the Rheinmetall Scorpion. So D1S Dis 1990, Spicy Babal Shoy for uploading this on the What Replays Are You website. I absolutely loved your gameplay and when I saw it I really wanted to commentate on it and share it with the English speaking World of Tanks population. And hopefully all of you out there enjoyed this replay as well. If you did please consider giving it a like, I'd really appreciate it. And let me know in the comments down below what is your most memorable blood, sweat and tears moment in World of Tanks. And as always thank you so much for watching. You've been Epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.